Thanks for tuning in. When I first moved to the United States and I ordered pancakes in a restaurant, they were nothing like what I grew up with. Join me in making thin and versatile Dutch pannenkoeken. Hi, I'm Twan and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies such as Indonesia. Dutch pannenkoeken are not eaten for breakfast like American ones are, but rather for lunch or dinner. They can be made sweet or savory. Today I'll be making naturel ones, plain ones, some with banana and some with bacon. Let's get started. To make pannenkoeken, you will need 250 grams of all-purpose flour, 500 milliliters of milk, two eggs plus one egg yolk, a pinch of salt, and you'll need some butter to cook them in. This recipe couldn't be any easier. We are going to start by adding the salt to the flour and then sifting the flour in a large, into a large bowl. This makes sure there are no big lumps of flour in here. And also make sure that the salt is mixed evenly through. And now we are going to add the milk and the eggs. And simply whisk it until it forms a batter without any lumps. Pannenkoeken are very popular at kids' birthday parties. There are restaurants all over the Netherlands that make nothing but pannenkoeken. They have an automated machine that just drops the batter on a, on a, road, on a conveyor belt and makes them. And you can get any topping you like. When you eat these, traditionally they're eaten with keukenstroop, which is the same syrup we use to make stroopwafels. I will put a link to that recipe in the description below. Now, these pannenkoeken are completely different from the small fluffy poffertjes that I've made before as well. These have no leavening in them and are thin and uh, rather large. They're not quite as thin as a French grape, but they are a lot thinner than American pancakes. Even though there is no rising agent in this batter, I do put it in the fridge for 15 to 30 minutes just to make sure that all the flour is fully hydrated. So I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge. Now that the batter is done resting, I'm going to give it a quick whisk and then we're ready to start making our pancakes. Over medium heat, I am melting a little bit of butter in my non-stick skillet. And I'm actually going to use a silicon brush to make sure that the bottom is completely covered. And now we're going to add one ladle of batter and swirl it around to cover the entire pan. Whenever we would get these at home, my mom and dad would alternate so that one of them could enjoy eating pancakes while the other one was cooking more. Now I'm just going to let this sit. And once the top looks dry, we're ready to flip it. Just like with American style pancakes, the first pannenkoek you make may not come out perfectly, but that's okay because that makes it so that you have something to snack on while you make more. So now that the top is dry, I'm going to flip it over. And this is exactly what you're looking for. Just little spots of brown on there. And um, because we're using a nonstick skillet, there's really no problem flipping it. When I was a kid and I would go to sleepaway camp over the summer, one day of camp was always pannenkoekendag, the day we ate pannenkoeken. And between all the boys, there'd be a competition of who could eat the most. I never won. I'm not that big an eater but many of my friends could eat quite a few of them. I think the first one is done, so I'm going to put it on a plate and then get ready to make the next one. From time to time, you may have to add a little bit more butter. So let's make another one and we're adding more batter. I normally make these to order, but often what will happen is I will get ahead of the people eating. So to make sure that they are served warm pancakes, I will put them in our oven at a very low temperature and then I serve them when they're ready. Time to flip. This one's done. I'm going to add it to my stack. This recipe makes somewhere between 8 and 10 pannenkoeken and for my wife and I that is more than enough. If you're cooking for a larger group you may have to double or triple it. I'm done making plain pannenkoeken and I'll be making banana ones next. 
Since I only have one pan, I will make sweet pancakes before I move on to the savory, so I don't risk having bacon flavor added to my banana pancakes. I've peeled a banana, I'm going to slice it into thin slices and just put it in a bowl next to the stove so that I can grab them easily. If you want to, you can toss these in a little bit of sugar uh, to make them extra sweet, but I just tried a little piece and it doesn't need any extra. I've got butter melted in my pan and I'm now going to ladle in some batter before adding the bananas. You want to do this kind of quickly because you want to make sure that the bananas are enveloped, if you will, in the batter. All right, and now we wait until we see the top drying out and the edges getting slightly brown. It's ready to flip. Okay, the banana one is done. I'm gonna slide it on top of the stack and now I'm ready to make the next. If you're enjoying this video, please click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. If you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, click the bell. Now that I'm done making my sweet pancakes, it's time to make the savory ones. I'm going to add bacon to my pan to crisp it up. This is beef bacon, but you can use turkey bacon or regular bacon. And once it's crisped up, we will remove it and then add it to the batter when we make pancakes. When I make bacon pancakes, I like it when it is little pieces. Some people actually put whole strips of bacon in their pancakes. I prefer this. Um, also, once I'm done making crispy bits out of this, there'll be enough fat rendered out that I don't have to add butter before adding the batter. My bacon is crispy, so I'm going to remove it and put it on a paper towel lined plate so that any of the excess grease drains off. Smells so good. There's actually a little bit too much bacon fat in the pan right now, so I'm going to use a piece of paper towel and my tongs to just remove some of it. And now I'm going to add the batter. And I'm going to sprinkle my crispy bacon on it and let it cook. It's finally time to eat the panna cooker. Now, there are many different ways to dress a pannenkoek. The most traditional is with keukenstroop. So I have a little bit here in this little ramekin that I warmed up just enough to make it a little bit thinner so it's easier to just kind of drizzle a little bit on the pannenkoek. Since there is no sugar in the batter, typically the toppings are sweet to compensate for that. And then you roll it up and you either eat it with a knife and fork, which is what I'm going to do, or if you're a kid, you just grab it and eat it uh, as the roll. Eet smakelijk. Mm. So good, it tastes just like my mom used to make them. You have a hint of butter, then the syrup adds just a touch of sweetness because this is not cloyingly sweet. Absolutely delicious. I'm going to have another bite. Mm. Mm -hmm. On to the banana one. I'm not adding anything, but if you want to, you could uh, definitely add some powdered sugar on this, which is what a lot of people add instead of the syrup 
or uh, because of the banana, uh, something like Nutella will go really well with that. Mm -hmm. The banana is so soft, adds a great flavor, enough sweetness for me. This is a great combination. You can let your ima imagination run wild. Use strawberries or apples with some cinnamon sugar. Mm, so good. Now that I've had my sweet ones, I'm going to end with the savory. So let me move this off my plate and I'll try the one with bacon. Okay, savory last. Same thing, I'm gonna roll it up. I'm not adding any toppings to this because I know that that bacon is so flavorful. I love bacon in my Palmakook. The crispiness as well as that saltiness, smokiness, and just the seasoning all together. It is absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions or memories or suggestions for toppings for Pannekoeken, please leave a note in the comments below. I will post a written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media as well. If you make Pannekoeken at home using my recipe, I would love it if you can post it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen and I'll feature it in my story and on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.